Hey, it's Declan Ryan, who is DeclanRyan.com, and um, and this is my take on Chapter 13 of Maxwell Maltz's uh, Psycho-Cybernetics. It's been an amazing journey so far. Um, as I said at the start of this, I've actually read this book twice before, but still prizing amazing nuggets out of it as I'm going it through this, this third time and blogging for each chapter as I'm doing it. Now, this chapter is really quite... Um, a lot of people can, can relate uh, to this chapter, especially if it's not your own behaviour, it's behaviour of other people that you know uh, behave in, in ways like this. Now this chapter is, is probably going to be, uh, this video is probably going to be shorter than, than many of those because it deals with a central theme throughout, but just expressed different, uh, different ways. And that's the emotions that accompany when you're about to do something which you consider to be of import. Um, there's many examples of this. The student that um, can provide all the information that you require, um, or has all the information that in his head of, of all that he's studied, but in the examination, his mind just goes completely blank. There's also, you might, if you're, if you're a, a sports person, and um, if you're playing amongst friends, you might turn out the most perfect shots, whether it be squash, whether it be um, target shooting with a rifle, whether it be golf, uh, anything that requires a certain amount of skill and a certain amount of, um, uh, of accuracy. Put yourself into a stressful situation and all of a sudden your skills seem to desert you. Um, and Maltz actually points to a similar thing where, where um, he refers to those money players people that can play really, really, really well, expertly in fact, until they try and compete for the top championships, championships that, that pay a lot of money. And all of a sudden, the brains just freeze, and, um, and these athletes that can't compete in those at that, that level just find all avenues uh, blocked. And what I found most fascinating about this was actually an experiment on, on, on how rats behave when they're given a, um, a calm, relaxed time uh, to learn a route out of a maze. There's no pressure. Uh, these are um, well-fed fed rats in this particular experiment. I'm just relating. And, um, but I can, the reason I'm telling this is because I can see it relating so well to how we behave as humans. So these rats were the well, well fed, they found their way, they found several ways out, out, out of this maze, all calm and collected, and when they were faced with a real crisis, in other words lack of food, uh, they were able to act calmly, rationally, and um, uh, with, without it making mistakes. However, in the same experiment, when these rats were hungry, and their ability to get out of this maze relied on whether, you know, um, them needing to, to, to feed themselves, uh, <laughs> stumbling over my words a little bit, um, they only had a sort of a, if you like, a one-track mind. They remembered, they knew exactly how to, how to do just, just one thing, and if that one goal, they, rem they remembered a specific um, route towards them getting out, if that one goal was blocked, they didn't know what to do. Now, how many of us can actually relate to that? Um, you've been in a, a, a crisis situation, you've found your way out of it, but if faced with a similar situation in slightly different circumstances, you freeze up. I know that I certainly have. Um, if, for example, you've got a mountain of things that you need to do um, during the course of the day, because of, of you having to, because of the pressure on, on, on getting those things done, all of a sudden you just go into freeze mode and you don't seem to be able to get any of them done. Whereas if there's a much more relaxed way of going about it, a much more relaxed way of learning and practicing for that occasion, um, you know how to go this, 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 calmly, easily and, um, and without emotion. One of the things that they're talking about also is um, mistaking excitement for fear. And that inhibits a lot of people. Whereas, in fact, the excitement is just a whole lot of extra energy which is boiling up, ready to be used. 
if you recognize it as that instead of it being instead of backing down because oh this is fear this is going to hurt me recognize that that's additional energy to be used creatively um, and here we come around almost um, full circle to the, the the title of the chapter which is using turning a crisis into opportunity if you recognize that energy which is there storehouse to be tapped on a bit like to any of you that are, are formula one racers or um, I don't think it's used in any other kind of uh, of cars. It's it's called Kurs. Now Kurs is used in Formula One cars, and uh, it stores energy for for um, when the car is braking, ready to be released when it's needed, and and the body does the same. Um, there's one quote here which um, I'm going to try and remember off the top of my head. Um, instead of worrying about butterflies, don't worry about the butterflies just as long as that in your stomach that is <laughs> if you have the feeling of butterflies don't worry about the feeling of butterflies just as long as those butterflies are all flying in formation and that's really sort of like the key a lot of people get put off by the nervousness of the butterflies but instead if you control that towards the energy of attaining your goal always keeping your goal in mind just like so many of these uh, um, previous sort of exercises and channels in psychocybernetics if you always keep your goal in mind you can direct yourself to that goal so much more easily so much more efficiently if you marshal your resources and actually get straight to there so um, that's basically a, you know he's he, he, he makes that um, case in several different ways and it's just it, it's just a really an, a, Good, good chapter, um, and uh, I found one of the one of the subheadings quite interesting. Um, well, funny if, if if you like. It's from the old Dr Pepper. Um, what's the worst that can happen? <laughs> if you visualise um, the worst scenario, um, and uh, and then it's just well, you know, it's it's not going to be a make or break situation, and and that can help you through as well. So. I hope you enjoyed this one. It's a little bit shorter than than, than um, other ones, although I see um, seven and a half minutes, not massively shorter. Um, but anyway, brilliant chapter. Um, I'm looking forward to getting my teeth stuck into um, uh, chapter 14, and we're nearly at the end of this book. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, then, uh, again, this is just my own personal take on the chapter. It's not a synopsis. It's not a complete. It's just blow by blow. It's just what I personally got out of it. Um, if you enjoyed this and you haven't um, subscribed to my channel yet, then subscribe to the channel, that would be great. Leave me a comment down below as to what you thought of it, um, or even on my blog, if you're reading this on my blog. And I very much look forward to seeing you in the next chapter, if you're following it. Meantime, make it a great day.